Good morning. So uh, today in this video, we're going to talk about three musty places uh, for landscape in Sri Lanka. I've recently been on a fantastic trip to Sri Lanka for 10 days. And my top three landscape locations were Zagira, Ritigala and Manira. And these three places are utterly magical. And I'm going to explain why, and I'm going to explain why they're fantastic places to photograph and fantastic places to be. So, Zagira, this location is absolutely stunning. As you climb through it, you see these amazing paths and structures that have been built for thousands of years, such as this incredible entrance here. As you look across the view, you can really realize what a natural rock fortress it is. And it's absolutely stunning for taking photographs of both the fortress and the surrounding area. These stairs are a serious climb going up, but they're well worth the view at the top. So it's an ancient rock fortress which is located near the town of Tambula in the central province of Sri Lanka. The site dates back to the reign of King Caspia from 477 to 495 AD, who chose this site to be his new capital. Peace and tranquility at the top of this place was absolutely amazing. I love this tree area, this reflecting pool. And you've just got these incredible views from the surrounding area. I really, really recommend coming here in the morning as there are far less people and you can really kind of have a sense of the vast scale of the place and really take in the atmosphere. So I traveled here with my friend Andy. We traveled over Sri Lanka for 10 days. And this is one of the most stunning places we visited. I found photographing here was a joy. You could look at various angles and various textures and surfaces. It's absolutely beautiful. The walk up and the walk down is pretty precarious. So take care when you're stepping down here, especially if it's raining, because it can be seriously slippery. But the views are absolutely stunning. Along this path are these incredible caves. You have to, you have to climb up a precarious um, set of steps to get there, but they're well worth visiting. So my next destination was Reticula. This is a fabulous place. It has such an atmosphere. That's my friend Andy again. Um, it was uh, it's an ancient site. Um, it's, in the, it's right in the heart of the mountains. It's really difficult to get to. I would recommend you go there in a four wheel drive because it is really, really tricky to find. Now, this is part of ruins that date back to the first century BC of a monastery that was here. It was abandoned following the Chola invasions in the 10th and 11th centuries, and it lay deserted and forgotten for years and years and years until some British surveyors found it in 1872. It really feels like a <coughs> lost 
civilization when you're there. But there are these incredible geometric lines everywhere you go. These geometric steps, like in this shot. There are also some outstandingly beautiful and unusual trees here. And I took great joy in searching out the trees, all dotted along the path and into the jungle. You really have a sense of being on your own here. Well, funny enough, we were on our own, um, right in the heart of the jungle. And it was quite an amazing atmosphere to be here. And then suddenly, in the heart of the jungle, in this 37 degree heat, where these amazing foundations of Buddhist temples that had long since been forgotten. I found the space incredibly beautiful, completely encroached on by the forest. This ancient recovered gem. I love the light and contrast between the temple and the surrounding mountains, and of course, the wildlife. This tree was one of my favorite trees I've ever seen. It's absolutely stunning ancient tree within the temples. the sculptural qualities of the tree and the fact that you can just stand there and get inside it and look all around it made it so beautiful. I stayed here for a while and photographed it. So lastly, Manera. This national park is quite something. I just think it's absolutely stunning. The journey there is definitely worth going uh, between um, April to October, and it's definitely worth going early in the morning. It is absolutely stunning just looking through this wildlife park before you even see any wildlife. So during this period of time, there are elephants of up to 350 to anything up to about 700 in this 8,890 hectare park. But it's not just elephants. You can see beautiful wildlife and a whole array of different things. So I was just watching and observing these birds in flight and drinking from the water. So as you keep on driving, you drive for a while and you just think, oh, well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna see anything. And then suddenly, before you even know it, there's a family of elephants in front of you and it is quite a sight. That kind of stillness and the presence of something so amazing is so heartwarming. It was so amazing to see such healthy, beautiful elephants in this amazing land. So we were able to just watch these elephants for a while, just to watch their habits, watch them eating, watch them interacting with each other. And it's an absolutely stunning location for landscape photography and wildlife photography. So this area was designated a national park on the 12th of August 1997. It had been originally declared a wildlife sanctuary in 1938. So desperate to maintain this ecosystem and maintain the lives of the elephants. The 
because this was built by King Mahinton in the third century. And this area that they call a tank, this reservoir, was there since that time. So it has historical significance as well as the current significance of being one of the major homes for elephants in the whole of the central province of Sri Lanka. Now the journey was quite something. We went through water, we went through, um, we, we had quite a, an interesting bumpy ride as we went. And uh, in a minute, I thought rather than showing you lots of beautiful images, I'd show you Andy and I getting knocked around from side to side by this jeep. It was a right laugh. We both had bruised ribs by the end of it all. But it was an experience that we will never forget. And then suddenly, we drove up next to this massive, fully grown male adult bull elephant. And this was quite a sight to see. Now, the drivers know, and everyone knows, everyone knows to stay well clear of these incredible, impressive animals because they can be incredibly dangerous. So it was quite an amazing privilege to see this bull in all its glory as we left this wonderful place. So those are my top three must-see adventures in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is just a magical place that I highly recommend visiting.